Latin nouns are divided into five distinct groups called declensions, based on how these nouns end and how these endings change because of their grammar. We group nouns into these declensions based on the ending of the genitive case. This video covers neuter nouns of the second declension, the O declension. Yes, these nouns are different from the regular nouns of the second declension, which tend to be masculine and often end in a U-S, but sometimes, you know, they'll end in an E-R or just an R. Your regular second declension masculine nouns are words like servus, puer, and wir. We will be discussing words like bellum and templum. These are the neuters. So you maybe already know that second declension nouns must end in a long I, pronounced E, in the genitive case. For second declension neuters, this is still the case. You know, the second declension is still the second declension. And by definition, all second declension nouns must end in a long I, E, in the genitive singular. Ergo, therefore, second declension neuters must still end in a long I, E, in the genitive singular. It's the other endings that are slightly different. So before we get to the endings and the declension, let me tell you two specific rules about neuter nouns. Not just neuters in the second declension, though, but all neuters in all declensions. And if you learn these rules, you won't have to memorize a whole set of endings. Yes, I know, memorization is bad. Well, memorization for memorization's sake is bad. So just learn the rules and apply them, and you'll be all set. Rule number one, the nominative and accusative is always identical. So for a second declension noun like bellum, since our nominative is bellum, the accusative is also bellum and ends in a um. Rule number two, the nominative and accusative plural is always a. So our second declension word bellum, the nominative and accusative plural is bella. Notice that rule number two doesn't violate rule number one, since our plural nominative and accusative are still identical. Now with those two rules applied, we can fill in the rest of our second declension endings. In the singular, the genitive is a long I, E, and in fact, it's given to us as the second form of the word. The dative is a long O, O, and the ablative is, is the same. In the plural, the genitive is orum, and the dative and ablative both is. Now that we have the full declension, it helps to add translations. The war, or a war, since Latin doesn't differentiate between the war, a war, or even just war, of the war, to for the war, the war as the object of a verb, and the by, with, from, and on the war. The plurals go likewise. These two characteristics of neuters can lead to some issues in reading, though. Here, look at these two sentences. Bellum ducem wult and bellum dux wult. The ending of bellum, war, is the same in each, and it can be either the subject or the object of wult. But the other noun, dux or ducem, the leader, can help us figure out the meaning of the sentence. So in the first sentence, ducem is in the accusative case, so it's the object of wult, which means that bellum must be the subject. The war wants a leader. In the second sentence, dux is in the nominative case, so it's the subject, which means that bellum must be the object of wult. The leader wants a war. Or, you know, because the word order is the way it is, it's probably more likely that it's a war the leader wants. My point is that the ending of your neuter noun isn't necessarily going to tell you whether it's the subject or object of the sentence, since nominatives and accusatives repeat. You will need to look at the rest of the sentence and determine what the subject is in order to fully understand everything. Let's look at another sentence. Puella templa visitat. Oh, look at templa. It ends in an A, just like puella, which is a first declension noun. But templa is neuter. So the A ending is actually a plural form. Here, templa is accusative, since puella must be nominative because of the short A ending. So maybe you can easily see that the girl is doing the visiting and the temple is receiving the visiting. Often you might be tempted to just translate this as the girl visits the temple. But remember, a neuter noun ending in an A will always be plural. And in fact, any accusative noun that ends in an A will always be neuter plural. So this sentence is correctly translated, the girl visits the temples. So the sentence, dux illa verba dixit, is correctly translated, the leader said these words. Illa verba, being the neuter object of dixit, must be plural. My point is, is that the A ending is tempting to translate in the singular, because it sure does look like a singular first declension noun. But don't. If it's neuter, it's plural. 
And if it's obviously the object of the verb, it's also plural, period. Comparing these endings to a regular second declension masculine noun like servos, we can see that the neuters are only different in three forms, the nominative and accusative plurals, and the nominative singular. And these three forms are what the rules cover. You know, these rules don't just apply to neuters in Latin, though. They are the case for all Indo-European languages that have neuter nouns. So the ancient Greek neuter has identical forms in the nominative and accusative, and the plurals of these cases ends in an A sound. It's an alpha in Greek. It's the same for Russian. In modern German, the nominative and accusative neuter singulars are always the same. So the lesson, learn the two rules and you'll be all set. And not just for Latin, but for a whole lot of other languages too. Who said learning Latin wasn't relevant in the modern world?